I showed up every day on Facebook and I did a, at least one live video straight every day for three and a half years. Julie Anderson and I was with Mon8 and then, but I was also with the group, the coaching group, Rank Makers, which is on Facebook and it's, they're, they're linked because okay. there's this whole other like shadow industry that is like, like a leech on the MLM industry. It, like a lot of people don't know about and they're both like I signed up with Mon8 in 2017 in May and it was about four months later I signed up with Rank Makers and I stayed with both for five years. So one of the things that I make note of is that I believe that people don't join MLMs when things are going particularly smoothly in life. I believe that these companies and these cults prey on people who are vulnerable and so I just sort of want to get a picture of what was going on in your life at the time that you first joined? I was trying to find a job. And I also was looking on Facebook and I saw an, uh, my friend post about her hair. And I thought, oh, wow, this her hair looks amazing. I should buy this product. I started off as a customer. And then after repeated orders, I thought, um, I could sell this stuff. I could make an extra $40. Oh, this is divine timing because I can't get a job. This could be my solution. Right, totally. And then we, we the rest is history. <laughs> and the rest is history. And here I am five years later oh, or six years later now. Walk me through what the onboarding journey was like when you really became part of your friend's downline. How did they, how did they present it to you? How did they sell it to you? Okay. So I signed up with the biggest product pack with Mon8. There's two options that you could sign up with a various size product packs or um, just a starter kit. Your upline won't get a commission if they if you sign up with just a starter kit, though. So in Canada, it was like $129, but I signed up with the overachiever product pack because it's like appealing to your ego. Like if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. The right All way. in. Right. Yeah. So and I did joined... they encourage that? Did they encourage oh, yeah. like, hey, you want to go yes. big or go home? Yes, uh, she t and she was my friend. I've lost a friendship over this. Yes. I've, I've lost many friendships over this, unfortunately. I hope she gets out one day. But um, they said, she said to me, we all wish we had have purchased the Overachiever product pack. <laughs> of course. You only get one chance to buy this thing and right. we all regret it. You get to save up to 50% on all these amazing products that you know and love. Right. Um, it's that artificial scarcity, artificial act now opportunity that they that they get you on. Okay, so you, they got you on that one. They got you got with, with, in, the, with the big package. And how much was that package to sign up, that sign up package? At the time, I think it was about um, $838, like with tax and everything. Wow, okay. Yeah. And what did it and come so, with? Uh, so I, the biggest product pack at the time, it had like all different kinds of shampoos and conditioners. Okay. And Rejuvenic Oil Intensive that has 101 uses. Uh, you're, <laughs> Maybe you're, it's an oil. Right. <laughs> you're selling me on it now. I'm about to join. Yeah. Yeah. I, need, I need that. Stay away from money. Okay, got you. Okay. So then uh, you buy the, the biggest starter package that you can get. And then where do we go from there? I get invited into a Facebook group and and that's just one of many. So it's my uplines group and then my uplines, uplines group, uplines, uplines, uplines group, all the way up to the very top. It's overwhelming. So when I get first invited to the main, like the my uplines group and my uplines, uplines group, because they're kind of together, I get love bombed. Welcome, Julie. This is, you're going to rock this business. And it felt so good. Everybody's so positive. I'm out there. I'm starting to share this opportunity, <laughs> these products. And I would have a question. Somebody has curly hair. What should I recommend? And I'd type it in the, in the Facebook group. And all these people would respond right away. It felt really good. And because I was the first in my area to sign up with Monite, I did pretty well. I, the highest rank I achieved was managing market builder, which it's not super high, but I was making a lot of money because I had a downline. And when I lost that rank, it I noticed a huge reduction in my paycheck. It was just, I was so blind to the whole thing. Right. So tell me about your experience between actually selling the products to people versus selling the business opportunity to people. And what it was like for you, like what was the breakdown in terms of the money you made from actually selling the products and getting commissions off of shampoo versus getting bonuses for having X number of people underneath you? So selling the products, I would usually kind of lead with that. And I did, I was, I was a full-time triathlete at the time. 
So I was still, like, I'd go swimming, I'd go to the pool. People would say, oh, your hair looks really good. My hair was looking good for the first few years, and then it tanked. <laughs> but it still took me a time to get out. So I, it was kind of, like, easy. I just said, oh, I'm using this stuff. Do you want to try it? So I would kind of just, they would try it, and then people would buy it. Then, but because I was the first in my area here, I started to post in the on Facebook, on the different Facebook groups, and I was like, do you struggle with hair growth, uh, all the things that you're not supposed to say. But in 2017, it was like the Wild West. You could say whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. And um, what what I led with was just the products. And then people, I'd say, if you want to get a bigger discount, you could sign up as a market partner. You're going to save 30% off. And if you happen to sign up someone that, you know, wants to have the products, you're going to make a little bit of extra money. That's how I did it. Now, Got the it. paycheck, I noticed um, this was actually before I spoke with you was the first time that I sat down and just added up what I earned the first year and what I spent the first year just in products just from money and I, I haven't I've had my head in the sand because I just it's I've I lost tens of thousands of dollars like in mm. the five years I was in mm. but I noticed when I had hit that first rank that or that MNB that they call it the first leadership rank I'm, I was earning, a, like, it's significantly more than just selling the products. You have to have a downline to make. Right. So I don't money. know anything about hair and shampoo, but maybe you can give me the, the women's perspective on it because you for sure know more about this than I do. So in terms of the prices of the products at Monet and the value, the quality of the product, <laughs> what, what, how does it compare to a, a <laughs> sample? <laughs> I, okay, I figured you were going to say something like that. I was so, brainwashed. Marco, I was brainwashed. Right. It's just like, they don't compare. The, here's, I would always buy like um, stuff from the drugstore. And I, I was happy with it. But I saw my friend's hair on Facebook and I thought, oh, this stuff has to be good. And when I, so this is my first time I ever purchased anything that was better, like a better quality than drugstore stuff. And... And I noticed my hair did look good. It like it moved, it was nicer. So I just thought, oh my God, this is the only thing that would ever work for my hair. It's amazing. So I bought in. Like it's not just this, it's not about the product. Like you think the product is imbued with this divinity that is coupled with this weird psychology, the cult. Like it's the product is linked with that. So You'll, there's groups on Facebook now where people are trying to find a dupe for their product of the company that they've left because we still hold it in such high regard. There's like a, Stephen Hassan talks about a cult phobia. There's a, like a phobia of leaving your company and not using the products anymore because no other product could possibly help your hair. So I like there, that comes into play when you're purchasing these products like you just believe that it doesn't matter how much they are it's such an amazing deal because no other company on the planet makes products this amazing right. <laughs> to have these results you know right they're sort of pairing the products with that toxic positivity feeling and making it making them linked so that it's a trigger for you when you think about the products or use the products that fills you with this positivity that makes you sort of look past the fact that as you say, the products were thumbs down comparatively and maybe the prices and, and whatnot. Um, how much is a bottle of Monet shampoo? If oh, I wanted to man. buy one from you and I wasn't in the company, I just wanted to buy a product from you. If you were just like as a retail customer, it, I think it's, it, it's probably about 38 to $40. I think I haven't looked. Okay. Um, it's really, it's absurd. Is it's that absurd. expensive for shampoo? Yes. Okay. What's it's what's ridiculous. what's a like a popular brand like a like a Tresemme or a L'Oreal shampoo from the store cost me? Like four four bucks, six bucks. Oh really? It depends if you have a coupon or something. You know, you get in on a deal. Right. Go in with my mom, who's uh, older, and get the senior discount. Right. Wow. <laughs> you really save some money. And then, yeah. so talk to me about the commissions. Like in terms of a direct selling uh, business. The idea of if you weren't going to recruit anybody, because this is the defense that all these companies use. You don't have to recruit. We're totally, you could just do direct selling, sell to your network. In terms of actually making a living selling this yeah. product and getting commission, like talk to me about the fathomability of that, like the feasibility Imp of that. Impossible. Okay. Impossible. That's what they, they tell you this. And then once you're in, then they say, if you're really serious about growing your business, you need to build your organization. You need to build your team, AKA recruit. You're only getting 15% on every sale. 
for a VIP customer, you get 30% on the purchase or like commission on the sale for a retail customer. Like if you were like, I don't want to sign up for this auto ship program that right. has, which they call flex ship. It's so much better because it's flexible. It's the same thing, but you would only get 30% on the sale. Of so if you sold to me, you'd get 30%. But then if you were um, a higher rank, you could get a bigger commission or you would just get a bigger discount when you buy it. If you're, if I'm at a higher rank, then, and I so, say my downline sold it to you, I'd be getting more money because my downline sold it to you. Does that, am I explaining No, I that, understand, right? I understand. Okay. I, I wanna point out something else here too that, you know, while we're on the topic of this direct selling aspect of it, is MLMs love to claim that they are totally legitimate direct selling businesses. No. But here's what I find funny, right? They are selling the product internally to its distributors. So you sign up as a Monet distributor, you buy, like you said, the starter package with a bunch of shampoos and whatever, then you go out and sell it, right? How does Monet know what you sold? How does Monet- They don't. Exactly. Is they, they don't care. No, but this yeah. is my point, is that they claim to be something that they can't back up at all. And as a matter of fact, if you go online, it go on Craigslist, go on eBay, you will find tons of MLM products that were sitting in somebody's garage for so long, whether it was, I mean, maybe not the shampoo because those products expire, but think of like LuLaRoe. Remember in the documentaries we, you know, in Lula Rich on Amazon, they show how like in this horrible phenomenon called inventory loading, women will just have garages and rooms full of unsold product that they had to keep buying every month as part of their re-up so that they could maintain their rank because as part of their convoluted business model, and I'm sure Monet, same thing, you have volume, personal volume. And like, if you spend this much money on product, you get this many points. And if you get this many points, you qualify for this rank, which means you get this bonus. And it's like, how is that commerce? How is that like whatever happened to just like, I made this shampoo formula, it cost me three, three bucks to make, I'm selling it for 10 bucks, profit seven bucks. What's with all this points and ranks and like, it's like it's a video game or something, you know? Like you got a, you got a 2X multiplier on this shampoo bottle, but this one only got you, you know? It's so weird. So that's, a, that's one thing that I, that I wish MLMs would address is like, all of them say, we totally stand behind our product. It's totally legit. You don't have to recruit. And the point that I like to argue is that even if the product's good, because this is a question I get asked a lot, well, Marco, what if I actually like the knives that they sell at Cutco? What if I like the insurance that I got with Primerica? I always say, look, even if you got a better deal from buying that MLM's product than you would going to the grocery store and buying the equivalent product off the shelf, which realistically, you're not going to get a better deal. But let's just say you were really happy with the product, your friend, it was your friend's business, you like supporting your friend, is that so wrong? If I don't sign up and I just buy the product, is that so wrong? I would say yes, because two reasons. A, if you're supporting your friend, you are just prolonging the amount of time that they are in the business where they are ultimately going to lose money. This is a factually proven, right? Two, the money that you're giving to that friend, you have to know that that money is going back to the company too. And the company is doing this to other people. So even though you're just trying to support your friend, you are still supporting the business model that operates in these harmful ways and operates in, in disguise as a legitimate direct sales company. So I know that's a, a long interjection and I apologize, but I just think that's important for people to understand is like whenever you hear a company say that they're totally legit because they sell products, well, they don't have that data of how much product they sold. They don't know. They don't know whether Julie, who bought a $500 or $800 package with a bunch of shampoos in it, they are, are, they're not following up with Julie to say, hey, Julie, how much of that did you actually sell? Okay, let's input that into the system. No, for all they know, it's still sitting in the garage. They only count, but they count it as retail profit, retail sales, because you bought it. You were the customer. Absolutely. And you know, I would uh, like to add to what you had said about those two reasons why, you know, it's not advisable to su just support your friend, because you're participating in a commercial cult, even as a customer then, and you're enabling that person's delusion that they could potentially rise the ranks and achieve time and money freedom. It is prolonging the time they're in, involved in the group, you know? Totally. And I'm, 
little, I'm gonna put this up on the screen so that all you guys at home can see this, but this is the Monate income disclosure for 2021. So consider, 2020, 2021 was a time where MLM sort of had a spike in business because everyone's stuck at home because of the pandemic and people are more desperate for business opportunities. So all these companies saw a huge spike in signups. And on the income disclosure for Monet 2021, it says 96.6% of people at the active and inactive market partners rank. So all of their people in their company, active and inactive market partners, so the bottom rung of the company at this rank in 2021, 96.6% of them earn $22 a month. Scroll to the bottom and there's a disclaimer that says, this does not take into consideration any expenses incurred by market partners in operating their business, including, but not limited to, the purchase of a starter kit, payment of renewal fees, purchases of product samples or inventory, shipping costs, transportation costs, training and educational expenses, and travel expenses. So that 96% is actually probably closer to 99%. And then consider that this average is also boosted by the incomes of the top people of the company who make tens of thousands per month. If you got rid of that, we would see the number probably rise above 99% to 99 point something. Take also into further consideration that this is only accounting for one calendar year. It is not accounting for the high attrition rates that we see in MLMs where most of the people who are in it in one year are not in it the next year. That's why they're constantly recruiting because they're constantly losing people. So really when we look at this number, it already looks bad from their report. 96.6% of people made $22 a month and it takes you an average of six months to even achieve that rank. Well, now we start to see that even that 96.6% that they tout is generous on their behalf. Absolutely. And you know, I went to, I attended Monations. So like where they say may it may exceed the, uh, you know, whatever you just read there is like may yeah. exceed. It totally exceeds because you're encouraged to go to Monations and they give you all these statistics like 83% of Monate market partners that attended the last event ended up, you know, achieving this high rank. And so just a, attending these events is a huge expense, especially coming from Canada. It's like always somewhere in the States. I went to like Columbus, Ohio. It's a lot and you can't, you don't eat. You have to only eat like the food that they have in the arena, which is just crap. It costs a lot of money. You're right. not getting a lot of sleep. Yeah. Well, it's part of that, you know, well, Julie, don't you believe in yourself? Don't you believe Absolutely. in your business? And I believed. If you yeah, really you have believe, to show up. yeah, if you really believed, you would come to our convention and hear what our leaders have to say. And, and you know, I actually recently I was, I was spying on an MLM company's Zoom meeting. And in it, they were saying, you know, these naysayers, they talk about how we have to spend all this money on our travel to these conventions and our products and blah, blah, blah. Isn't that a business expense? I'm like, what? Okay, even if it was a business expense, you're losing money. That's bad business, whether it's an expense or not. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you, you could say it's a business expense to spend a couple thousand dollars on flight, hotel, Uber, taxi, food, flight back home, etc tickets to the event. You could say that that's a business expense if the amount you were making in a year made that amount worth writing off. But if I'm even in the first few ranks of an MLM company, unless I'm at the very top, basically, I'm losing money if I'm following all their advice. And you know, again, they'll, they'll deflect all these points and say, well, all of that's optional. You know, we, we, we don't encourage people to go into debt or put themselves into a precarious financial situation. It's their choice if they want to come. Yeah, they say that publicly, but behind closed doors, as you can attest, it's like, Julie, if you really want this. Oh yeah. And you know, they, do, they actually do it publicly now too, because like right around the same time, I thought if I get additional coaching because I had an athletic background and my business is really going to blow up because I need to learn how to do live videos. I need to learn how to write curiosity posts. So I joined this coaching group. And, and it's called Rank Makers, and they're teaching you, like along with Mon 8, but really pushing it hard in Rank Makers, that if you want to, you need to like get another credit card, sell all your um, children's toys, it, you have to do whatever you can to get to your company's event, and also Rank Makers events. So there's a lot of us that are taking 
additional coaching and going to additional events. So whatever multi-level marketing company you're in and also whatever additional multi-level marketing coaching you're getting. Right. And it's double the expenses. Totally. And something like Rank Makers to me, that that is where they really double down and get you on the self-development aspect yes. of MLM. And see, this is why it's so hard for people to break out is because it's not really at the end of the day about products and ranks and money. What they are really selling you is the idea of self-improvement. And no one is ever done self-improving. Yes. It's an infinite thing you can keep reselling somebody on. There's always more work you can do. There's always higher to strive. There's always mindset that can be improved. And this is where it becomes really, really predatory because you tie that self-improvement pitch with the fact that, well, here's this product, you keep buying this, this is your key. It, it controls somebody's entire life. It's, it's a complete vertical integration from what they wake up in the morning and think to what they do in their day, to how they interact with people outside. They start looking at the world through a completely different lens because they have been trained and brainwashed into believing that all value and everything good that will ever happen in their life is only going to come from this. That's ex that's so well said, and that's exactly it. And I hope people like get this. I know, like with rank makers. So you've heard of this, um, you know, get, learn a why, tell your why that makes you cry. It's deeper in rank makers. So we're taught and coached to use our childhood trauma, um, abuse stories of abuse. Do this on Facebook Live videos, and we owe it to all those people who have had similar experiences us to show up for our network marketing business. We owe it. We are going to let those people down. There is somebody on their hands and knees praying for you to show up, get off the couch, stop watching Netflix and do that live video and follow up and prospect those people. Like it's said with that evangelical weird thing. So it's you. So not only are you like, you believe in the products, you're like personal development. I want to be the better version of myself. Now you're like, I owe it to these people. My, I have to share publicly trauma on Facebook to strangers to emotionally manipulate them to potentially recruit them to my network marketing business. And I am also now self this, this weird self indoctrination of I will feel horrible if I even take one day off. I'm yeah. six months behind. I'm going to let that person down. And trying to reconcile that after you've left this industry, it is the ultimate mind fuck. Yeah, you're gaslighting yourself. Yes. At a point, they don't even really need to do or say anything. They've already set up the triggers within you that, like you said, if you do sit there and decide to watch Netflix and unwind, you're going to have that internal alarm going off like, Julie, come on, you got it. Yes. On. Yeah. Um, it's still here. It's like a year later and it's like I'm still unpacking stuff. It's yeah. wild. I'm yeah. 47. Mm. I know I know better. I got sucked in at 42. You know? One of the things I really want to do, my main focus with this series, aside from bringing awareness to the acute harm that these companies do to individuals, is I really want to destigmatize people who join MLMs. And I really want to get rid of this idea that people who join MLMs are like idiots who got duped. Because it is not about your level of intelligence. It is exactly. It is about people's vulnerability. Everyone at some point becomes vulnerable. No, there's nothing any of us can do to prevent a loved one dying or a job laying us off or the world shutting down for two years. All of these things come with inherent difficulties and challenges that affect people in vastly different ways depending on their situations. So everyone is susceptible. Everyone. Oh, absolutely. Everyone also has a friend and we all trust our friends. So when a friend comes to you, and you already trust them, or they're part, you're already part of a group that relies on like group faith. This is why churches are such a hot you know, place to prospect if, for your MLM, because it's already like a faith-based community. You already trust your friend. You're already vulnerable. At that point, I would actually be amazed if you didn't at least become curious about the opportunity, straight up. Because... Oh, it's no skin off your back to come join a Zoom meeting. Exactly. You're not doing anything anyways. It's COVID. Just log on to Zoom. You're sitting, you're sitting there anyways. Come on. So that's one of the things that I really want to do is like 
I've gotten a lot of comments like that. Oh, well, it's their fault if they got scammed. I'm sorry, that's not true. That's not the case. It isn't. And you know, even like I work with people now, I'm, I'm a community disability support worker. And like, even if somebody is stupid or dumb, that still doesn't make it okay for other people to scam them. Of course, them. of course not. So it, like level of intel, I mean, and people, a vulnerability can be your altruism. These cults prey on people's altruism, hoping they are going to impact the world. Make it a better place. That's also a vulnerability. Yeah. Totally. During this time, you're in Monate. You did everything to the letter of what your mentors told you to do, your uplines. You oh, went... and exceeded it. Oh, and exceeded it. Yeah. So because, um, so my, I, it's duplication in multi-level marketing, right? Which you just are, you know, you're given these systems. You're supposed to prospect people. You're supposed to do um, curiosity posts. So I copied what my upline was doing, which I created a Facebook business page. And then I was starting to post there every day. And then I was starting to post on Facebook every day. And it was like spamming. Like, this is, oh my God. Because it's like I'm in full cult mode. This is the most amazing shampoo ever. But then when I, like right along this time, I got into like rank makers and they're like, you got to do a live video every day. And the leader of the group is Ray Higdon. And he's like, I've done a live video every day for 10 years. So I'm like, I can do that. I have an endurance athlete background. I did, I've done 18 Ironman. I know how, what it takes to like commit to something, to be coachable, to show up every day and not get results right away. So I made it fit in my mind. So I showed up every day on Facebook and I did a, at least one live video straight every day for three and a half years wow. on top all the other things that I'm doing, prospecting, like when I, I'd also, I mean, I, this, I need to add this in as well, is I also joined part of Rank Makers. It's called 100K Inner Circle Coaching. It's sold to you because the holy grail of being in network marketing or multi-level marketing is to achieve the six-figure income. And so it was sold as all these coaches are making 100K in their own businesses. They're going to coach you how to do it too. So I was paying eight hundred dollars us a month oh my for the, i paid that for a year and, this and is what how you deep get? i was in oh it was it was nothing so i got a 30 minute <laughs> phone call every two weeks and all of the coaches um none of them are making a hundred thousand dollars a year i know this because my coach one of my coaches actually left and she's speaking out now um it, and we're referred to videos that ray makes already in rank makers it's like the biggest scam and I was sucked Fuck. in and I felt privileged. I felt privileged. And I would also go back in rank makers like all of us in inner circle and be like, hashtag grateful. This is the training that I received in inner circle today. And so then people are moving from like funneling in from rank makers to inner circle. And I'm also doing it on Facebook. I'm plugging the coaching group more than I'm plugging Mon8. Right. Plus I'm doing all of the Mon8 stuff as well. God it's damn. One. 200 people a day I was prospecting at my peak on Facebook and Instagram. I do it so many, so much that I would get like in jail, you know, Facebook jail. And then I would follow up with about 40 people on average during that year's coaching that I was with the 100K Inner Circle, plus doing a Facebook live video every day. And I was, I was wanting to add value, give without expectation, follow up with everyone. If any, if somebody likes it, thank you so much for liking. Thank you so much for viewing my stories. Do 10 to 15 stories oh a day on top of it. We, us motherfuckers work hard. Right, like, right. Makers, they don't fool around. You so know? this is what's really clever, right? Is they preyed on what you already knew to be true as an athlete. These tried and true yeah. principles. Like you have to work hard. You have to show up every day. You have to be consistent. So logically, it makes sense. Well, yeah, I guess in my experience as an athlete, I have had to do those things. Why should business be any different? The problem is that... They are selling you on the idea of working hard and being consistent at something where you are already predetermined to lose. You know, it's like one of those like uh, street scams, like a little cup and ball game, right? Where it's like they're shuffling the ball around. It's like, watch the ball and you think it's up to you. But little do you know that the ball was in his sleeve the whole time and that there's no, there's actually, the ball is not under any of the cups. And it's like a little sleight of hand trick that when he lifts it up, he actually pops it in there. And he's like, oh, it was in this one. That's like a nice simplistic way of saying it. Yeah. yeah, so so they're they're taking a morsel of truth and they're bastardizing it to make it yes. about something totally different. And they they're very yeah. good at this. They're very clever at these little false equivalences where they say, well, you know, people say 99% of people lose in uh my MLM, but 
50% of marriages fail. Does that mean marriage is a scam? And it's such a deflection because marriage, you could argue, is something that actually does depend on you working at it. You know, you're not recruiting other spouses to yeah, recruit other spouses. There's so many layers. There's so many layers to why that is a stupid argument. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it works. It works on people, man. People get brainwashed, you know, and and that's what it is. So you were literally using Facebook to the point where Facebook blocked you from using its features too much because you were essentially spamming, right? Absolutely. So and you were, Instagram too. Yeah. and you were bought in to the coaching and you were at that you know you were you were all in right you were I was all, all in. in tell me about what brought you to the point of leaving and then tell me about the impact that leaving had on you and what the response was from your former coaches team members whatever okay the cracks began to show about um the time i started on tiktok in about august 2019 and I since learned from other people too, like it's, you know, you're always questioning things. You see contradictions from the beginning, but I had to have a lot of shit pile up before I was able just to leave. It's wild to me what I put up with. So August about 2019, I get on TikTok and I'm having the time of my life. I didn't want to post about my business opportunity or the products I wanted to create. I love creating content. And so I was having fun over there. And, and then I realized very quickly, I'm like, this is an effective way to tell a story in 60 seconds or less. We're always about story sell. So I go and I tell my coach, I'm like posting in rank makers that, and the leader of the group, Ray, he starts making these like um, trainings. Uh, he, he's like known for this. He will make a live video about you without saying your name when you're like disobedient. So he started making these passive aggressive live videos saying TikTok is ding dong. Oh, ding dong, it's going to be like fine, it's going to die, all this stuff. And everybody knew it was about me, but there's this, the mind fuckery that all this is, is that you're like, is it really about me? Like, no, it, it couldn't possibly be. So I'm like, this is wrong. Like, I know I'm right, but there's this weird gaslighting going on. Well, it gets to the point where he realizes that it's an actual thing. He asks me to shout him out on TikTok, send him followers. So I do, because I'm like, he's my mentor. I really respect this man. And so I'm like, I thought, well, what could I do? I don't want to just say, follow this guy. And I'm like, these are three reasons why you should follow this guy. Then he asks me to do a TikTok training to sell in rank makers, like two rank makers. I do, it's like 17 minutes, 33 seconds. I have this fucking thing still. Um, because then he bundled it up as a bonus, bonus number two. He sold it and he never paid me anything. I was... I was so floored at this, Marco, because I had respected this man. I had looked up to him. I was like, I, I wanted to be like him. And when he, it was just like, I just was like a piece of shit. Just like, that's all he wanted was this training. And I'm like, this is wrong. That still wasn't enough for me to go. But that was like another big, um, Yanya Lalich and Mad Madeline Tobias in their book, um, Take Back Your Life, another one like a good Stephen Hassan book. Um, it talks about a shelf in the back of your mind. You need to have these things piled up on the back before it finally breaks. It was March 14th, 2021. I decide I'm not doing a Facebook Live video anymore. I, it's not healthy. I'm like, I've been oversharing. It doesn't feel right. I didn't know I was on my way out of the multi-level marketing industry, but that was a point. The next day, March 15th, Ray makes a live video about me in the group. He doesn't say my name. Everybody knows it's me. They're tagging me. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Because I see on my phone and I'm like, this fucker is making a video about me saying something like I, um, uh, I can't handle haters. I am not as, uh, I'm not as consistent as I could be. Like he's so like, so powerful and shows up powerfully. If you wanted to really impact the world and succeed in your business, you need to keep doing this. I'm like, this is wrong. One of his employees sends me a message and asks me, we just want to make sure you're quitting doing live videos for the right reasons I'm like what the fuck is this this is and that was the last time i was within rank makers and it was so september of that year i start i attend monations virtually and it is a religious shit show i'm like i can't even sell shampoo to anybody if this is what it's about they have stuart mcmillan in front of a choir that is singing and it's all, and, and he's also saying like, come to Sunday service, we're gonna baptize people. They baptized people at my nations. I'm like, this is not what I signed up for. And I'm like, I'm in a cult. Like it's starting to come together. 
Right. So December the 13th, I decide like I'm, I got to send a resignation letter into on eight. I had left rank makers. There was other shit going on there, which I'll get into because this is the fallout, the pushback. But I'm like, I, it's not enough for me just to let my membership lapse. I, I want out. This stuff is gross. So December 13th, I make my first piece of anti-MLM content on TikTok. I felt comfortable there because I have a larger platform there than I certainly do on Facebook. And Facebook is like the home of, of rank makers. Um, so now the, the pushback when I was telling my upline and my friend, because we had been going kind of through the same things together. When I said I was leaving and I'm like, I, can't, I have to speak out. What's going on is wrong. She immediately turned just like all the podcasts I'd been listening to. I'm like, this, this can't be happening. Are you serious? It was a light switch that went off. It was unbelievable. She just completely turned. She's just, our friendship of 15 years gone, you know? And I'm like, this is, if you speak out, you're, you're in a cult. She says, anti-MLM, this is a cult. And just, if yeah. you, it, it was, it was all her fears, you know, coming out. But I was like, oh my God. So, um, predictably, as soon as I started speaking out, I had like the entire network marketing industry start like coming up coming at me in the in the comments on TikTok, but I didn't fuck around. I was like, I was, because I had grown on TikTok already, I'd kind of gone through like spates of like growth and then you get these trolls or hate, actual hate, not what like network marketers call hate. So I just set boundaries. I'm like block, delete, block, delete, because I want to have safe spaces on social media for people to start commenting. And if they see like these negative comments, it will push people away because it pushed me away. So then I get up enough courage to eventually post on Facebook because I saw an ex rank maker. She made a live video on Facebook. I'm like, oh, it's time. I had to speak out because I had sent followers to Ray and I had in, like right. I had endorsed him. Right. I felt an ethical obligation to speak out. Also, I had like recruited people to get his coaching. I had said it was amazing. People spent like me tens of thousands of dollars on his coaching and his courses over the five years I was in there and other people, I'm like, I need to speak out. So I go on Facebook and it was unreal. The it was mostly the men of rank makers. And a lot of them were like the top of the pyramids, never heard of these fuckers before. And I would put in my, um, like before I do a video or a post, I'd be like, this is a safe space for people who have left. If you are a rank maker, do not comment. They didn't care. So I just blocked and deleted them too. And then I'd like make content about them. So, um, what's good, I lost a lot of, lost a lot of friendship that I thought were friends, but about four months, three months out, my coach, she was waking up and she was like, I need to get out. I'm working on my exit strategy. This is your friend and, of 15 years. Uh, no, this is my, okay. I'm sorry. Um, this is within rank makers. Oh, I see. She was one of my coaches, a hundred K in her circle coach. And she was considered one of Ray's top coaches. And what do they and mean when she, they say coach? Like, what is she really doing? Like, what is she, how, what are her qualifications? Positive shit, listening to you, um, and re and redirecting you to watch different, uh, videos okay. that Ray would do. Okay. Go ahead. Continue. Sorry to interrupt. That's exact. That's a really good question. Yeah. Uh, so why I'm saying she's a top, uh, one of his coaches, because a lot of these people were paying twenty five, thirty thousand dollars for his coaching and they're getting paid 22 bucks per 30 minutes phone call session. So it's a, it's such a scam. So she ended up getting out and which was really good. My whole point was like, if there can be one person that gets out, if there's one if for, out of all the content I'm making, I hope to God my coach gets out one day and she did. So that was good. And then there's been other people that have started to get out and start to speak out. But the, um, the pushback from the, the network marketing industry, the behavior is predictable. Cult behavior is predictable. They come at you. It's fucking wild. Which is funny because they spend all damn day talking about positivity and bl and blocking out the naysayers, but then they are like, you know, like a violent mob when someone it's leaves. True. I will say though, Julie, like I'm surprised to hear you say that you tried to undo the damage you'd done because a lot of people feel so much shame after they leave an MLM because, you know, rightfully so, like you have made this your entire life and identity and you have advertise it to literally everyone you've known your whole life on yeah. Facebook, whatever. So a lot of people just want to go and hide under a rock after yes. it happens to them because it's like, and it's so hard too, because I wanted to mention this. There's a sunk cost fallacy that goes on. I used to work at a casino and we were trained to spot the 
red flags of addicted gamblers because we had a duty of care to not allow people to spend beyond their means and like we wanted to keep an eye out for gambling addicts, right? So they taught us about sunk cost fallacy. And you have to understand in the mind of a gambler, and people do this in many avenues of their life, relationships, business, gambling, but in gambling, the sunk cost fallacy is like, there's a guy at a slot machine, he sits there every day for a year, and he loses, 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 loses money. But he keeps playing because he thinks that maybe that next spin will be the jackpot that makes it all worth it. It's a fallacy because even though, yes, you could win, te you could technically win the jackpot on the next one, it's a fallacy because really the sooner you leave the casino is when you stop losing. And so it's this tough internal war. And people in MLMs have this too. It's like, God damn, bro, how, how could I ever even like fathom the idea of going back? I've told everyone that this is the thing that's going to make me rich. I've told people my most personal yeah. motivations and my whys for why I want to do this. I've given people above me permission to hold me accountable and remind me of my why if I ever slip or I don't do the Facebook live video today. And it's like you've, you're all in, in every aspect of your life. I know there's going to be comments of people saying like, oh, your friend who turned on you after 15 years, what a bitch. You, you, you almost, no, you can't even blame her because she is, she's she's brainwashed, in. you know? Exactly. She's been brainwashed and that friend, you know, Sarah, let's just call her, you know, that's not Sarah that we're it's dealing with her. right now. It's a different, she's brainwashed. Thank you. She is brainwashed. Thank you for so. pointing that out. And even you, that wasn't you. It wasn't. And it's weird because it's like looking back, um, it felt like I, there was all these moments where you're, you're aware of what's going on, but then you're like, um, the sunk cost fallacy masks itself as I'm letting myself down. I've put so much work into myself. So it's not even about the money sometimes, but it's like the personal development part. And I did want to say this too, this is important um, because there's a, a real uh, stigma, like you said, of shame and then also seeking help because I thought I'm like, I'm done. I was, your, your uh, videos with um, R Robert Fitzpatrick, I watched it twice when I was exiting. It was really helping me. And then also your video about like why pyramid schemes are like impossible. Or yeah, mathematically and, impossible. And it's, it's wild. Like I had to, I want to learn this. And it is like a thought stopping cliche. Pyramid schemes are um, my, my pyramid, my company isn't a pyramid scheme because it sells products. Boom. It's like a brick wall. And even when I'm trying to learn, I could not listen. It was crazy. So I watched you know, your videos really helped. And then four months out, after starting to speak out, I had to seek help, professional help, and I should have done it right away. And I went to see a psychologist and I asked, do you have um, experience with cults? Do you support the multi-level marketing industry? And he was like, I worked with him and it was, it was the best thing that yeah. I did. And I wanted yep. to move into this activist role. But people like need to know that it's um, they've been a part of a commercial cult. Not everybody has the same experiences. Of course, you could be on the fringe group and you're not being affected. But that doesn't mean this, these abuses don't happen. That it's important to seek out therapy if yeah. you can. It's, it can be very challenging to find someone. But I wanted to put that out there, too, because the stigma of shame keeps so many people quiet. Totally. And I was like, fuck it, I'm done. Totally. I don't care. I'm going to step into it. I'm going to own it. And fuck you for trying to control me anymore. No more. No, I have this. My friend sent it to me. No more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's really good. And you did do the right thing by going to therapy. People, if you're a former MLM member and you still struggle with like trust issues because of what you experienced, you have to understand you were, your mind was professionally abused. You need professional counseling to repair that damage. This is really serious. And it sucks because I hate to say to people who have already lost all their money that they need to spend more money on therapy. But again, it's like, it's that sunk cost fallacy. You know, I would rather you guys go continue and spend 200 bucks a month on therapy than spend 500 bucks a month continuing your coaching or your, you know, whatever it was. Also with, reg with regards to Facebook and the, and the stuff you were posting, did the people that you knew from your life before Monate, did they, did anyone ever try to like 
talk to you about yes. it? Did anyone tell you anything? Hey, I think this might be a bad thing, pyramid scheme. Like, tell me about that. It was too late. The three months that I was in Mon 8, it was enough. I was already deep in. So anybody that was even like really good friends that, and people that I knew from triathlon, they're like, is there something wrong with you? Oh my God. I did a live video, passive aggressive. You get into this business and people are asking you if there's something wrong with you. Can you believe them? I thought everybody was a hater. I felt that it was everybody was a hater too. I would look at people's content saying, this is a pyramid scheme. This is why. And it does not sound, I can, I can feel both feelings in my body right now where it's like, this is logical, this makes sense. I can also remember how it was like in 2021 and I'm like, they're so angry. They're filled with hate, even if they're just saying a statistic. Their lives suck. Yeah, I can't hear them. Like you literally can't hear them. Um, when I was watching Lula Rich and I was listening to Robert Fitzpatrick, um, his bit on that, on that documentary, it was like a brick wall came down again. I had to keep rewinding it. And I'm, I couldn't hear him and that really scared me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with my mind? I can't even hear this, are you kidding me? And even unpacking this, um, I knew when I left, I'm like, this is wrong. But the awareness is, I still have to watch like, you know, your content, other people's content to be like, oh yeah, that's why this isn't like real estate. I mean, I know it's not like real estate, but I don't know it. You know what I, I mean? I understand. Yeah, emotions yeah. are more powerful than <laughs> than data. And and one of the things that no pro MLM person has ever been willing to answer to me is, you know, like like you said, well, it can't be a pyramid scheme because pyramid schemes don't sell products. Yeah. There have been more than 30 companies shut down by the FTC for being pyramid schemes. One of the most popular ones is Vima. Everyone remembers Vima, the orange cans of the drink, right? Vima had a product. All of them actually had products. And up until the moment they were shut down, they were legitimate multi-level marketing companies. Furthermore, if you look at the FTC's website, if you just search FTC MLM on Google, on the exact same page, like they share a page, multi-level marketing businesses and pyramid schemes. They're on the same page. And it literally says, pyramid schemes are scams. They can look remarkably like legitimate MLM business opportunities and often sell actual products, maybe even ones you've heard of. So yes, pyramid schemes can have products. It is not about whether they have a product or not. When was the last time for anything, aside from like illegal drugs, when was the last time you had to actually contact a person and meet up with them to buy something? It's a business model that doesn't exist anymore because technology has provided us the convenience through Amazon, through the fact that there's a Walmart wherever you go, that we don't need to do this. Like it's much more accessible to buy things now than it was a hundred years ago when maybe the milkman came to your door. It's the same reason why nobody, it would be like if people started advocating for a blockbuster to open up today. It just doesn't exist anymore because it, and the statistics show this as well, like less than 1% of all sales made in North America are from this type of direct selling. Why the hell would I not just go to the grocery store and buy my shampoo or the drugstore or buy it online or whatever? Like, I actually can't think of anything today that I would need to or want to buy directly from somebody. Even if the commissions were great and the prices were like not high and it was a good product, you would probably be the best salesman in the world if you were able to make a living selling a product and competing with brands that actually get sold in Walmart or a exactly. like drugstore. In every single way you slice it, it is illegitimate. What I wanted to ask you was regarding the impact of the whole experience on your <laughs> life and personal relationships after the fact. After you left, okay. what was it like? Did you try to reconnect with old friends who had who you had previously thought to be haters and et cetera, you know? They were all there. They were like, thank God you woke up. Mm. It was amazing. And then I could, there was like a the first period when I was like, speaking out like and it, you get all this hate it seems to be this is the pattern anyway i was very isolated and then i connected with like a couple of other anti-mlm creators that i was still trying to figure out what was going on they sent me a couple messages and i'm like oh my god i have a friend it felt really good and then as time passed um i people came back into my life and people would send me other messages on like instagram or whatever and they're like oh thank god you're out good for you they totally understood 
when you're in an MLM, you think they're all haters that if you, it's like another cult phobia. If you leave, your life is destroyed. All of your relationships are going to be gone. And people on the whole are not like that. They're empathetic. Even if they don't understand how, you know, you could be so stupid, get sucked into the commercial cult, whatever. They know somebody, maybe their parents or their friend, but they have this, they know that it's wrong. They know that you've been affected. So it's been really good. I've had people, um, like say, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that you're back. Like, good for you for speaking out. Um, good for you for escaping. Um, the hard, the w weird part is where I sent out so many of these prospecting messages on Facebook. I s still occasionally get somebody saying, yeah, you could send me a video. Cause I'd sent out these ones. I'm like, Hey Marco, I see you're in uh, Tucson. I help people in Tucson make some extra money. Would you be open to taking a look at what I do? If not, no big deal. Freaking fire those out. Sometimes I get a message back. They're like, yeah, I'd be interested. I'm like, oh, I haven't, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to deal with it. I just delete it. I can't no, be yeah. like apologizing. I can't do it yet. So I, <laughs> I like, I'm trying to do what I can to make amends. You know? Send them, hey, I, my bad. I was in a pyramid scheme. Watch this instead. I like make all this content now as much content as I made before I'm making it like anti MLM right, right. people and stuff like that. You know? Right. So, but on the whole, most people, it, it's been so nice. I'm glad to hear that, that there was nothing um, permanently effective because that is the real risk, you know, and, yeah, you know, or, or, you know, more commonly, the person in your position would feel so much shame that they wouldn't even want to reach back out and they would let the relationship fizzle just out of yes. pure guilt. So I'm glad yes. that you are facing it head on. You went to therapy like yeah. you have uh, responded to the to the trauma and the brainwashing in my opinion in in the best way thank you yeah do you think and i mean just five years is a long time do you think mm -hmm. that the amount that you spent might have reached six figures you know i i'm not sure i know for sure it's about 40 or 50 grand beyond that i don't know I, i'm i'm right. i don't know if i'm ever gonna have the courage to like sit down and sure but with time, absolutely. I was on my phone like 24 hours a day. Well, well yeah. It's like I'm not 24 hours a day, but like with time added into it. Oh That's the God. other thing is like when it comes to governments or like, for example, the FTC trying to assess the harm a company's done. Unfortunately, a lot of times in the eyes of the law, they define losses as purely monetary or like property. But they don't take into account the personal loss suffered in people's relationships, yeah. their livelihood, their time, their mental state. Those things are hard to quantify, you know, to say I was brainwashed. Well, how can we, you know, it's not like we can get an accountant to look at the ledger of your mind and sort of calculate yes. that. But it is a huge part of it. And I, I'm, I'm trying to make that more understood and more known. You're very good at it. Like you, you really understand um, on a on a deep level what it's like like i'm really it's really cool to see somebody outside of this being able to articulate it it's like yes that's exactly it like the psychological abuse it's i'm unable like i was watching i watched your live stream this morning because i didn't watch it last night and how you were no or like okay if we all get people to together and we like go after one company send like things to the ftc i'm like that is such a brilliant idea when i first got out and even it's it's I'm out like just over a year now. It's almost impossible to articulate what's going on in your brain. Like it is so scrambled. It's hard to even talk about the experience, let alone string together like a coherent sentence of like, this is how much money I lost or this is why. I'm like, fuck, cult. Uh, like I just don't even know how to, you know, don't even know how to communicate. Yeah. And I know a lot no. of people feel that same way. It's like trauma brain or, or something. I don't know. No, no, totally. You, your brain has been scrambled. That's a great way of saying it. Like it's, it's, you've been operating from faith and from yeah. follow the leader mentality for so long that even trying that to, gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, you've been operating from that place for so long and blocking out everything else that even trying now to articulate a coherent, logical thought, it's like, it, it, it literally is like mental damage. I wouldn't want to say brain damage. I'm not a, obviously I'm not a neurosurgeon or anything like that. I'm not a therapist, but like, I, I see it in people. You can see it in people when they've been through something, you can, you can hear it, you can see it, but I'm very proud of you for, for a being able to get out for B like trying to undo the damage you did by putting out an equal opposite force to outdo, like outweigh that and undo that. 
and also for doing this and sharing your story because it doesn't matter the demographic, doesn't matter the age. Like I said before, everyone is susceptible and there's somebody out there right now. Maybe it's your old friend, I, I, I hope anyways, that's watching this. It's like, oh, I'm Julie. Yeah, that really covers it for me. If there's anything else that you want to add, please. I think I'd like to um, just say this is a special message for anybody that's in Rank Makers and they're leaving, or just the MLM industry, I guess, in general, that there's, um, we're told that there's something wrong with our mindset and that if you give up, like there's only one way to lose and that's to quit. And that I just want to encourage you, if you're happening to watch this, that good for you for watching this and that to keep asking questions, keep critically thinking, um, that's what I want. And that there's nothing wrong with you. You are perfect exactly as you are.